Brannon. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Cohen. Here. Constantinides. Here. Carnegie. Present. Deutsch. Diaz. Present. Drum. Here. Espinal. Eugene. Here. Gibson. Jonai. Present. Gradenchik. Holden. Kalos. Here. King. <coughs> Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Here. Lanceman. Here. Lander. Here. Levin. Here. Levine. Mizell. Menchaca. Miller. Moya. Present. Perkins. Present. Powers. Reynoso. Present. Richards. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Presente. Rose. Here. Rosenthal. Present. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Present. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Ballone. Van Bramer. Williams. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. We have a quorum. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. All rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. We will now go into the invocation that will be delivered by Reverend Sean J. Lee of Mount Lebanon Baptist Church, located at 228 Decatur Street, Brooklyn, New York, 11233. And please rise. Let us join in heart, mind, and spirit as we go in prayer together. We thank you for this day, O oh God, and are grateful for another opportunity to serve the people of this great city. We ask now that you endow this council with the attributes they need in making decisions that will affect the lives of so many. Give them wisdom so that their legislation will have long-term positive effects, helping them to choose what is right instead of what is expedient. Give them compassion so the council will have the disenfranchised and marginalized in mind, especially our children, seniors, and those who are disabled. Give them out-of-the-box thinking so they can develop creative ways to help those who need it the most. Give them integrity so that they will always work toward the greater good for all and not the selfish ambition and goals of the few. Give them courage so that they will not back down from doing what is right in your eyes but to stand tall and firm. Give them strength 
so that they can manage the difficult burden that comes with such a great responsibility. Give them humility to help them remember their job is not one of overbearing power, but of service. Give them leadership so that they will know how to navigate the various roadblocks they will encounter in creating a better city for all New Yorkers. And in a world where those in power seek to divide us, give this council a sense of unity and camaraderie, reminding them of the African proverb, when two elephants fight, it is the grass that gets trampled. Show not only this council, but the people of this city that our differences should not be used to make us combative toward one another, but our unity in the midst of our diversity is what makes this city so great. So bind us together now, God, no matter what our socioeconomic background may be. Bind us together now, God, no matter what our sexual orientation or gender, gender identity may be. Bind us together now, God, no matter what our religion, age, or color may be. Bind us together now, God, with cords that cannot be broken. This is our hope and this is our prayer. Amen. We will now have a motion to spread the invocation in full upon the record by speaker, by speaker, by council member Cornegy. I don't even know how to respond to that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm stuck, Lori. <laughs> um, thank, thank you, Madam Majority Leader, for this opportunity to spread um, this above uh, the entire council. Um, I would like to say that Reverend Sean Lee is the epitome of all that is good of Bedford-Stuyvesant. As a, as a former resident and childhood prodigy from Brevoy Projects, he's a Morehouse man, went on to get a master's degree from Brooklyn College, a master's from Princeton Theological Seminary, and most importantly, a member of the most, the greatest fraternity known to man, Omega Psi Fraternity Incorporated, Alpha Upsilon Chapter, better known as Brooklyn Omega. Reverend Lee has broken out of the traditional role that relega relegates clergy to its respective pulpits. As a member and leader in Metro IAF and EBC, he's led the way for affordable housing in not only Bedford-Stuyvesant and Crown Heights, but the entire city of New York. I'm proud to call him a friend, a leader, and like I said, a shining example of all that is good about Bedford-Stuyvesant. Mount Lebanon Baptist Church is a beacon. It has remained that way for several decades. Uh, it's a pleasure to call him my friend uh, and to spread this invocation over the, I mean, to spread the, <laughs> the invocation, I'm still stuck on Lori, uh, uh, over, over today's stated meeting. Thank you, Reverend Lee. Madam Majority Leader, before uh, you move on, I want to second what Councilmember Cornegy said about uh, the pastor who has joined us here today, uh, Reverend Sean Lee. Uh, I'm really glad he's here. It's a nice, pleasant surprise, and I have had the opportunity to get to know him through his advocacy for New Yorkers who are in need of habitable and affordable housing across our entire city. So I am grateful for his work in the clergy community, but also his work beyond the clergy community in lifting up uh, the most vulnerable in New York City. Thank you very much. Thank you, and I too want to thank you for being here and for your very timely and powerful prayer and for the work and advocacy and the fight that you have organized and launched all throughout the city so that our seniors would have truly affordable housing. And I thank you um, and all of the pastors who have joined together to recognize our most vulnerable in our housing population. So I thank you for your work and your advocacy, and you have changed the lives of thousands of people already. Thank you so much. We will now have the adoption of minutes, and we will have that uh, completed by Councilmember Salamanca. Thank you, Majority Leader. Uh, I make a motion that the minutes of the stated meeting of June 7, 2018 and June 28, 2018 be adopted as printed. 
Thank you so much, Council Member Salamanca. And now we will go on to messages and papers from the mayor. <clears throat> Excuse me, M83 submitting Carl Weisbrod for appointment to the New York City Charter Revision Commission. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. M84 through M88, submitting the names Jose Francisco, Jean Javi Pakrashi, <clears throat> Susan Stetzer, Luisa Torres, and Curtis Walker to the Nightlife Advisory Board. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. Preconsidered M89, Nathan and Joseph, candidate for the Civilian Complaint Review Board. Rules, provisions, and elections. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. M90 through M92, various applications. Uh, coupled on a call-up vote, and at this time, I would ask for a roll call vote on all items on today's land use call-up calendar. Adams. I vote aye. Ampri Samuel. I vote aye. Ayala. Aye, vote aye. Barron. Borelli. Aye. Brennan. Aye. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Cohen. Constantinidis. Aye. Cornegie. I vote aye. Deutsch. I'll do the same. Cohen. Diaz. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Aye. Eugene. I vote aye. Gibson. I vote aye. Jonai. Aye. Holden. Kalos. Aye. King. Ku. I vote aye. Kozlowitz. I vote aye. Lanceman. Lander. Aye. Levin. Aye. Levine. Aye. Maisel. Yes. Menchaca. Aye. Miller. Aye. Moya. Yeah. Aye. Aye. Perkins. Aye. Did he come out? Powers. Aye. Reynoso. Aye. Richards. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rose. Aye. Rosenthal. Aye. Salamanca. Aye. Torres. Aye. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. Aye. Williams. Jaeger. Aye. Matteo. Combo. Vote aye. Speaker Johnson. Today's land use call-ups are adopted by a vote of 44 in the affirmative and zero negative. And now we will have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon. First, I would like, if we could have some quiet in the chambers, I'd like to- Quiet in the chambers. Remember a few New Yorkers who have passed away since our last meeting. First, Robert Martinez, who worked with the NYPD at police headquarters and was tragically killed in an accident on the Gowanus Expressway. I want to extend my thoughts and prayers to Robert's family. I also would like to remember a 9-11 first responder who passed away in recent weeks. Paul Johnson, who was with the NYPD Emergency Services Unit, died from an illness related to his work at Ground Zero. For his tremendous sacrifice, I'd like to extend my thoughts and prayers to Paul's wife, his nine children, and his 19 grandchildren. Wow. Lastly, let us remember Wanda Rios, a security guard who was murdered while on duty in the Bronx last month. Ms. Rios was only 45 years old and leaves behind a loving family, including her spouse and her daughter. I offer them my thoughts and prayers, and if people could please rise so we could have a moment of silence. 
for those that we've lost. Thank you very much. So jumping into our docket for the day, the council will vote on the following finance items. First, we'll vote on resolution 469, which I sponsored that would support an additional borrowing by the Hudson Yards Infrastructure Corporation in an amount not to exceed $500 million to complete the infrastructure projects in the Hudson Yards financing district, including phase two of the project, which includes the expansion of Hudson Boulevard and Park. The resolution would also support an undertaking by the city to pay current interest subject to appropriation to the extent not paid from revenues of Hudson Yards Infrastructure Corporation on such Hudson Yards Infrastructure Corporation indebtedness. I want to thank the staff who was involved in this, Dr. A. Majeski, Raju Mann, our land use director, Rebecca Chasen, our chief counsel for the finance committee, and Davis Winslow from the finance division. The council will also vote on uh, two Article 11 property tax exemptions. 526 West 158th Street in Councilmember Mark Levine's district is going to support the preservation of 29 affordable housing units. 941 Rogers Place in Councilmember Rafael Salamanca's district will support the preservation of 20 affordable housing units. Next, the Council will vote on the following land use items. East 14th Street in Irving Plaza in Manhattan, the Council will vote on an application by the New York City Economic Development Corporation and 14th at Irving LLC to redevelop a city-owned site with a 21-story technology-focused office and retail commercial building. The building will be home to a unique cluster of workforce development organizations which will help connect thousands of people each year with the skills and training they need to connect with jobs in the new economy. I want to congratulate Councilmember Carlina Rivera uh, for her work on this project, which has, which has the opportunity to transform how we train New Yorkers for jobs of the future. Uh, next, we're going to be voting on the inward rezoning in Upper Manhattan. The council will vote on the inward rezoning and a neighborhood plan. The plan for inward will result in the investment of hundreds of millions of dollars in housing parks, waterfront education, small business, job training, community services and culture, and infrastructure funding. Uh, I believe we have the responsibility to turn over every stone to ensure that people in this city have access to affordable housing. And I know that Council Member Adonis Rodriguez has fought as hard as anyone could have to secure thousands of new affordable units and a commitment to preserve thousands of existing affordable units. As a result of this rezoning and the inclusion of city-owned sites, which Councilman Rodriguez negotiated, this plan will facilitate the development of 2,600 new units of affordable housing, as well as preserving and protecting another 25 existing affordable units. The modified plan reduces the scale of rezoning and removes the commercial U from Dykeman to Broadway to 207th Street. It commits resources for small business development and includes a new policy to promote longer term commercial leases with limited rent increases, all of which we hope will preserve the existing small business character in Inwood. The plan will include significant investments in our public school facilities and funding for a new immigrant research and performing arts center, which will celebrate the immigrant history of the community and of our city, while also providing much needed performing arts uh, venues for local community groups starved of such space in the neighborhood. Finally, the plan includes millions of dollars for new and improved public parks, waterfront open space, in addition to transportation, pedestrian safety, and infrastructure improvements. This application, of course, is, council, is in Councilmember Idanis Rodriguez's district. E the East 33rd Street rezoning in Manhattan. The council is approving with modifications an application submitted by 33rd Street Acquisition LLC for a zoning map amendment and a zoning text amendment to facilitate a development of a 23-story mixed-use building. And this project is located in Councilmember Carlina Rivera's district. 
1019 to 1029 Fulton Street. The council will be voting on an application submitted by the New York City Department of Housing, Preservation and Development and Fulton Star LLC to seek designation of an Urban Development Action Area Project, a UDAP project, for project approval and disposition of a city-owned property at 1027 and 1029 Fulton Street in Brooklyn. These actions will facilitate the development of an eight-story building with approximately 50 residential units and 6,100 square feet of ground, for, ground floor commercial retail space to be constructed on the disposition area and six adjacent privately owned lots. This project is located in Majority Leader Lori Cumbo's district. North Conduit demapping in Queens. This is in Councilmember Donovan Richards' district, where the proposed demapping would allow the applicant to purchase a portion of the project area from the city to use on a permanent basis for permitted off-street accessory parking for the uses on the applicant's property adjacent to the demapping area. Balton Commons in Manhattan, the council will vote on an application for the proposed Urban Development Action Area designation, again a UDAP project, for project approval and disposition approval <clears throat> for the property located at 263 to 267 West 126th Street. This action will facilitate the development of a new seven-story mixed-use building that includes 36 affordable rental units, community facility space, and retail space. This project is located in Councilmember Bill Perkins' district. 40-3182nd Street, the, this application has been withdrawn by the applicant and will be voting on a motion to file. The council is also voting on six sidewalk cafes today. I want to thank the land use staff who worked on all these projects, Amy Levitin, Julie Lubin, Jeff Yoon, Liz Lee, George Sarkissian, and Brian Paul, as well as Raju Mann, our great director of land use. Uh, next on the agenda, the council will vote on the following pieces of legislation. We'll vote on introduction number 1087, sponsored by Councilmember Jumani Williams, which will co-name Rogers Avenue between Farragut Road and Eastern Parkway as Jean-Jacques Dessalines Boulevard. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Chris Artori, Patrick Mulvihill, Kenneth Grace, Chima Obacheri, Tirza Nasser, and Megan Chen. The council is also going to vote on introduction 965A, sponsored by Councilman Rafael Espinal, which will allow businesses selling tobacco products additional time to register for a tobacco retail dealer license and come into compliance with a law that the city council passed last session that strengthens regulations on the sale of tobacco products and limits the number of stores selling these products. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Rachel Cordero and Balkis Murig. Finally, the council will vote on legislation to regulate the for hire vehicle industry in New York City. This legislation has received a lot of attention over the past few weeks, and before we vote on these bills, I want to clarify a few things. Number one, we are not taking away any service that is currently being offered to New Yorkers who use app-based for hire vehicle services. We are pausing the issuance of new licenses in an industry that has been allowed to proliferate without any appropriate check or any real regulatory framework. If anyone wants to put a new wheelchair accessible vehicle on the road, they can do that. In fact, we encourage them to because less than 1% of for hire vehicles on the road are accessible to folks who are in wheelchairs. This is about careful deliberation. The Taxi and Limousine Commission is going to study this issue over the next 12 months with quarterly data reports that are going to be given by the for hire vehicle companies. This is about supporting and uplifting drivers in New York City. All drivers, yellow drivers, green drivers, livery drivers, Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Juno drivers, Via drivers, and making sure that they are paid enough to support themselves and their families. We believe that these tragic suicides that we've seen in the city are because there has not been uh, a real look in this industry to figure out how we regulate it in an appropriate way to make sure we're creating sound public policy. This is a plan that we came up with, and in my heart, I believe this is the best path forward. Our goal has always been to protect drivers, bring fairness to the industry, and reduce congestion. Those have been the three guiding principles. Protect all drivers, bring fairness and parity in regulation, across the industry and to do our best
to reduce congestion. 2,000 new vehicles have been being added to the road every single month. That's what this legislation does, this package of legislation does. And it represents the broad outlines of what we think our next steps should be as a city to help the industry. This package of bills is not punitive. This package of bills is thoughtful, it's careful, it's deliberative, and we have spent months working with all stakeholders involved to ensure that what we're doing is responsible and takes into consideration concerns from everyone in the entire industry. Introduction 838C would add a new license for high volume for hire vehicle uh, transportation services serving 10,000 trips a day. And introduction 958A would remove the enhanced financial penalties for unauthorized street hails in the hail exclusionary zone to bring them in line with penalties citywide. Both of these bills were sponsored by Councilmember Ruben Diaz Sr., who is the chair of the Four Hire Vehicle Committee in the City Council. Introduction 634B, sponsored by Councilmembers Ruben Diaz Sr. and Councilmember Adonis Rodriguez, would waive the licensing fees for accessible taxi cabs and four hire vehicles in order to promote their use, getting more accessible vehicles on the road. Introduction 144B, sponsored by Councilmember Stephen Levin, would require the Taxi and Limousine Commission to study and decide whether to adopt vehicle utilization standards or regulations on the number of four hire vehicle licenses in the city. During this 12 month study period, there would be a pause in the issuance of new for hire vehicle licenses with an exemption, again, for wheelchair accessible vehicles. Furthermore, the TLC would be able to issue licenses during this 12 month period if they determine that there is a geographic need for neighborhoods that need these vehicles to meet the demand and there would not be a substantial impact on congestion if those licenses were issued. And lastly, Introduction 890B, sponsored by Councilmember Brad Lander, would require the Taxi and Limousine Commission to set minimum payments for four-hire vehicle drivers for trips dispatched by high-volume four-hire vehicle services. The TLC would also be required to study payments for other four-hire vehicle trips and to study whether or not they should set minimum rates of fare. Um, I am really proud of this package of bills. I believe we are going to uplift many, many workers workers in New York City who have not been able to make ends meet, who have fallen behind, who have had to deal with predatory leasing companies, who have been uh, exploited and just trying to make ends meet to support themselves uh, and their families. And that's what uh, Councilmember Lander's bill does today. I'm very, very proud of his leadership on this. I'm proud of Councilmember Levin, of Chair Diaz, of Councilmember uh, Rodriguez, uh, and of all the folks who worked on this. The staff worked tremendously on this. I want to thank them. Malik Nasseruddin, James DiGiovanni, Emily Rooney, Jonathan Maserano, Rick Arbello, uh, Nell Beekman and Tirza Nasser, as well as Laura Popa, who has spent months and months and months working on this package of legislation. We have talked to every stakeholder involved multiple times. We have been thoughtful, careful, deliberative, and we know what we're doing today is going to hopefully create the groundwork for a sound, uh, fair regulatory framework that doesn't exist right now and we think will hopefully figure out some of the upheaval in this industry and move our city forward in a dynamic industry that is changing all the time. That concludes our very slow agenda for today's stated meeting and I look forward uh, to proceeding with today's votes. Thank you very much, Madam Majority Leader, and I see our public advocate uh, has joined us. Yes. Thank you, Speaker, and we will now have uh, discussion of general orders? Seeing none, we will now have report of special committees. None. Uh, Madam uh, Majority Leader, I believe that uh, Councilmember Rodriguez wants to speak on the Edward rezoning as part of the uh, time that we just passed. So if we could move back to that so the Councilmember could speak on the rezoning in his district. And Councilmember Rodriguez, uh, before you do that, I want to thank you all for the opportunity to preside over today's stated meeting. Um, following Councilmember Adonis Rodriguez's statement, we will be rejoined by public advocate Letitia James, and she has eclipsed me in this process, and I'm proud to turn over her seat back to her. Thank you, and we'll now turn it over to Councilmember Rodriguez. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say that the life-threatening 
images that I receive, similar to the one used by ICE, doesn't reflect the majority or the great members of my community that I have here showing their point of view on this proposal. Councilmember, you can continue. So as I say, I know that the life-threatening message that I receive, similar to one used by ICE, doesn't reflect the voice of the members of my community, including those that are using the constitutional rights, has expressed their point of view in favor or against it. Hoy es un día donde nosotros estamos discutiendo el presente y el futuro de nuestra comunidad. Hoy nosotros estamos decidiendo buscarle una solución a una crisis. If folks could please let the council members speak on this. Hoy nosotros estamos buscando una solución a una crisis que se ha acumulado en los últimos 30 años donde el vecindario de Norte Manhattan se ha construido menos de mil apartamentos. En el plan de hoy, preservaremos 2,500, contribuiremos, contribuiremos, construye, construiremos 5,500, la mayoría asequible. I'm very fortunate to be a council member representing the hardworking of Norte Manhattan. Everyone that has been part of this process has made this rezoning better as we are ready to vote this plan. So, uh, Sergeant, uh, if, if, so if, if folks, folks, Quiet. folks, folks, either, either, either we can let the council member finish with you all sitting up there or to be able to proceed with today's votes and have a full hearing, we will have to clear the balcony if you do not allow him to speak the rest of his time. So that choice is up to you. If you continue to speak out, I'm gonna ask the sergeants to clear the balcony so that we can have votes today. Uh, so that is up to you. So council member, if you wanna to continue to proceed. In the three year process of this rezoning, I've been attended town hall and have met with community leader about the thoughts and legitimate concerns about the rezoning. I heard loud and clear that the rezoning was too broad and could threaten the character of our neighborhood. For that reason, we, we decided to take the U out of the rezoning. Our districts and hardworking families have drived for decades despite the neglected and lack of investment by the various administrations. Fewer than a thousand affordable units have been built in the last 30 years. With this plan, we will create, preserve, and protect over 5,000 affordable units, including the developments of 2,600 units on public and private sites. Among other investments, we will bring over 50 million in STEAM and robotic programming and capital to George Washington High School and Luperon High School and a new P-TECH, a school with partnership with CUNY. We are building 100% affordable housing development at critical public sites, including DOT bridges, repair facility, and two of fire street, with a plan to do the same thing to similar sites in our community. We are bringing to our district the first in the nation immigrant research center and performance arts space to be run by new public library and leading community. Again, I believe that anyone that has the opportunity and the right to express themselves, but when anyone posts any message, Similar to the ISIS, is unacceptable. Gracias. So, uh, 
Quiet, quiet, quiet in the balcony, please. So, Sergeant, if you could please, Sergeant, uh, Director, if you could please clear the balcony. <laughs>
Okay, if we could please have quiet in the chambers. Quiet in the chambers, please. Everyone have their seats. Quiet in the chambers. Uh, Madam now. Public Advocate, yeah. I believe that the sponsors of the four hire vehicle uh, piece of legislation want to speak. And now continuing with general order discussion, beginning with Council Member Diaz. Quiet in the chambers. Council Member Diaz, your microphone. Thanks. Thank you, Madam Chair, lady. Ladies and gentlemen, today I'm honored to be the chair of a newly formed committee. The drivers in the city of New York, taxi drivers, have, have, have suffered too much. They have been used by everyone. They have been used by the insurance company, by the union, by, by the, I'm sorry, by the uh, basis, by the leasing company, by everyone. So it is about time that we do something. But the Bible said that where there is no vision, the people will, will perish. But this city council, had a, a, this new city council had a man with a vision, a vision for the future, a vision for the city of New York. That's our speaker, Cody Johnson. And he created a new committee and empowered me to be the chair of that committee with the intention to report to him our finding of our uh, solution or, or proposal. This committee has been working since, uh, since January for the last seven months. My council, uh, my brother, my friend, and my counselor, Christopher Lin, have been working day and night a part-time worker that works more than a full-time worker. And I would like to thank the Speaker Council, Cody Johnson, for allowing me to the chair of this committee. The Speaker Chief of Staff, Jason Goldman, he's been very helpful, member, the member of the, of the For Hire Vehicle Committee. We'd like to thank Council Central Staff Malak, Master Dean, and Luis Cholea Brown. He was always there. I would like to thank Mr. Eto Figueroa and the 32BJ Union member for their support, the Metropolitan Taxi Cab Board of Trade. I would like to thank Ms. Barabi Desai and the New York Taxi Workers Alliance. And, 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 and ladies and gentlemen, this is, today we could make history. One of my bills, 838B, is a bill to uh, regulate Uber. We have to make a difference between regulating Uber and capping Uber. Capping Uber is for one year, regulating Uber is it's done for, for hard no time. So one of my bills, again, 838B, is to regulate Uber. And if that bill is approved by you, uh, my colleagues, New York City, New York City will make history, being the first city in the nation to regulate Uber. So, uh, and, 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 and the bill that uh, Landers uh, submitting, Councilman Landers, thank you very much for your support, Councilman Levine, for their support and their, you know, desire to work together to help the drivers and, 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 and all those that have, been helping, that have been helping us. Again, I'm saying that with these five bills that we are submitting today to your consideration, council members, and Madam Chair Lady are all in favor of the drivers. We have nothing to fear. We have nothing to worry. There have been uh, scary tactics saying that uh, our community will, will suffer. But ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. There's nothing, there's no suffering. Our community have drivers that they call livery, and those livery drivers are being are being fine. They are being, I mean, they are fine if they pick up in our community. So they are prohibited to pick up in our community. They liberally drive, drive, drive by immigrant, Hispanic, and black uh, and minority community. So they are in our community. They, they could not pick uh, in our community because they would be fine. But Uber could take that same taxi driver uh, and that same, same livery and use it and they, they, they could pick because they were for Uber.
but in their own, they cannot pick. This is injustice. We're trying to level the, 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 the playground for everyone, and I appreciate the speaker. I already, he already stand up telling me it's enough. Mr. Speaker, I'm a player. I know when to shut up and when to speak. But thank you very much for your support. And ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you all vote yes on all, the, on all these five bills. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Quiet in the chambers, please. Council Member Lander. I think Council Member Levin is ahead of me. Council Member Levin. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Council Member Lander. Um, Thank you, Public Advocate. Uh, I want to uh, take this opportunity to especially thank Speaker Johnson uh, for his commitment to this legislation and ensuring that this legislation is, um, uh, was crafted in a fair manner, uh, in, a manner that took, uh, in a manner that took all sides and all perspectives into account. Um, and so I, I greatly appreciate his leadership here. I want to thank our chair, Chair uh, uh, Ruben Diaz Sr., uh, for uh, taking on this issue with such passion uh, uh, since his arrival here at the council. And uh, I think uh, his uh, support for this legislation, but also for the entire package, is totally instrumental. So I want to thank you, Chair Diaz. Um, today, the council has a historic opportunity to pass a legislative package that will bring much needed oversight and accountability to the ride share vehicle industry. The fact of the matter is that the taxi industry has capped the number of licensed vehicles allowed on the road for over 70 years uh, when it comes to yellow cabs, yet we have not done the same for other for hire vehicles. And as a result, uh, since the, uh, the at hail uh, revolution, uh, we have seen companies grow exponentially without any long-term citywide plan in place to address it. And as a result, the number of licensed vehicles in New York City has almost doubled since 2014, uh, or even 2015. So when we think about the last time we were discussing legislation on this matter back in 2015, uh, there were roughly- Excuse me, council member. Sergeant at Arms, there's someone apparently on the steps that is talking loudly. Could you please refrain or take your conversation outside? We are still in session. Thank you. Apologize, Council Member. Um, even when we were last discussing this issue in 2015, the number of four-hour vehicles on our streets has almost doubled since that time. The market is, in fact, oversaturated, and as a result, drivers are struggling to make ends meet. So Intro 144 accomplishes several goals. First, it addresses the need to make pay more equitable for all drivers by pressing the pause button on the number of licensed for hire vehicles, otherwise known as FHVs, on our streets. The one-year cap maintains our current level and prevents greater saturation of the market. I hear from drivers all across the industries who say that they're driving around for longer, having a harder time getting rides, and earning less income. I just want to actually read from an, an op-ed in the Daily News yesterday from a driver named Tidian Samasa, uh, who wrote, I've been a professional driver serving New York City for 14 years. In 2014, I switched from driving a yellow cab to Uber. At that time, with fewer cars and higher fares, you could make good money. I could take care of my family. I made up to $1,900 a week, working eight to nine hour shifts, six days a week. Then in 2015, they started piling on the cars. And in 2016, they lowered the fares. Now, there just are not enough fares to go around. I work seven days a week, and even driving for 15, 12, 13, or 14 hours a day, I rarely break $1,000 a week. And that's before expenses. I pay for my car, gas, and vehicle maintenance all out of pocket. And in fact, a study recently came out last month uh, by James Parrott and Michael Reich showed that those expenses add up to about $20,295 uh, every single year. So out of a, if he's making $1,000 uh, before, so that's $52,000 a year, subtract $20,295 a year from that, uh, he's barely breaking $30,000 a year. And as we all know, it's uh, virtually impossible to support a family here in New York City on that type of salary. Secondly, the bill helps us accomplish our public policy goals around transportation accessibility and congestion. Over 2,000 vehicles are added to the road every month, 
while the rate of traffic in Manhattan slowed by more than 17% in 2016 alone. This is just not sustainable. The bill does, however, include an exemption for accessible vehicles, incentivizing companies to speed up their commitment to making vehicle transportation more accessible to disabled riders across New York City. Lastly, the bill starts us on a path to a reasonable, responsible, and sustainable long-term solution for both drivers and riders alike. During the one-year pause, the TLC will work with the Department of Transportation to study vehicle utilization rates, access to service in different geographic areas around the city, driver income and traffic congestion so that we can enact adaptive, forward-thinking regulatory system that balances the need for riders, riders at rider access with our goals of maintaining a living wage and fair transit system. We are long overdue for regulation of the for hire vehicle industry, and I'm proud of the steps we're taking here today. With the passage of today's bills, New Yorkers will be the first major city in the U.S. to set a limit on ride-sharing vehicles. Um, now, I do want to also acknowledge that I've heard from a lot of New Yorkers uh, and colleagues um, across the board on the long-standing discrimination that people of color have felt across New York City from uh, taxi drivers and the fact that uh, app-based hail services have really filled a void in making sure that, uh, that people are not discriminated against and that that has had a significant impact. And we do not take that issue lightly. We take it very seriously. We need to redouble our efforts, consistently commit ourselves to root out discrimination every single time we see it. We can, it, and we can in no way uh, countenance it or allow it to continue. And, and uh, the commitment here from this council to address that issue is ongoing and very serious. And I just want to acknowledge that that issue is legitimate. It is real. And as Councilmember Lander has said, you know, as a white man myself, I don't have to suffer the indignity of, uh, of having cars pass me by uh, as I put out my hand for a hail. Um, uh, but it is, it is a very serious issue, and, uh, and we do not, and we take it very seriously, and I want to acknowledge that. Um, with that said, I want to thank the many drivers, advocates, and community leaders who have generously contributed their time and expertise to make sure that this bill brings real solutions to New York transportation system. I want to thank the speaker for his incredible leadership on this issue, along with Laura Popa and council staff, uh, James Di Giovanni, Jonathan Mas Maserano, Emily Rooney, Rick Arbello, Shima Obashera, and John Basil, uh, as well as Malak Nasarendin and uh, Nell Beekman uh, from the Legislative Drafting Unit. Um, I want to acknowledge um, uh, uh, TLC Chair Mira Joshi, Jeff Lynch uh, from City Legislation on the Mayor's side, as well as the Taxi Worker Alliance, uh, uh, Beta V Desai, her entire uh, organization, the IDG, which has uh, brought a needed voice to this conversation as well, and all of the, uh, all the, the, the stakeholders. Josh Gold from Uber, who has been uh, uh, readily available at, at uh, each and every instance where we've reached out to him for input, as well as, uh, as, as other companies and, uh, and individuals that have been affected by this. So, I want to thank everybody for their time. I want to thank my colleagues for the support, and even the, uh, and my colleagues that are not supportive of this measure. Thank you so much for your consideration and for your very important feedback. And with that, I encourage my colleagues to vote aye. Thank you very much for the courtesy. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Rivera. Thank you so much. I want to thank um, thank you for letting me speak today about some very important land use decisions for my district that we're going to be voting on today. So after seven months of intense negotiations with City Hall, I'm voting yes today for a tech hub at Union Square that achieves the two most important goals our community needed from this rezoning. This tech hub will bring true, true community benefits, tech education, and workforce development services that will finally give women, people of color, and low-income New Yorkers access to an industry that has unfairly kept them out for far too long. And of course, we have also achieved crucial protections for the neighborhood that I have lived in my entire life and seen change so much over the last 15 years. These protections include key landmarkings, a commencement of establishing a protective zoning measure in neighborhoods south of 14th Street that will regulate commercial development, and further resources and commitments from HPD, LPC, and the mayor's office that will have a lasting positive impact on the preservation of affordable and historical housing alike. I believe these protections for the neighborhood are the first in a string of victories that allow us to develop sensible zoning for livable streets, establish landmarking of precious historical sites, and ensure the small businesses we cherish prosper. And not just for my district, but I hope we as a council 
can have a better process for community-based planning that really does look at things holistically going forward. I'm also proud to be delivering more affordable housing we desperately need to the Kipps Bay neighborhood of District 2. The project we are approving today on East 33rd Street has the potential to bring up to 40 affordable units with protections in place for the tenants from the previous buildings on site. These land use decisions are the most important I've made in my eight months as an elected official. I, of course, have to thank all of the advocates that kept pushing me to make this project better. To my neighborhood partners who helped me drive home the fact that the history and character of our community is a priority, thank you. This is your win. I could have not have gone here without my staff, and I have to thank my interns who have been an indispensable part of my team and are going back to school soon. That's Chelsea, Sierra, Elizabeth, Izzy, Joseph, Ryan, Benny, and Maranisa. Yes, they all fit in about 1,500 square feet in the Lower East Side. And then I also have to thank the amazing council land use team, especially Raju Mann, Julie Lubin, and Liz Lee. Thank you, of course, uh, for the leadership of the speaker on projects like this, always standing by his members, and Jason Goldman for his unending patience, and to the mayor's team, especially Jeff Lynch and Amit Tagani. Uh, and last, but certainly not least, a very special thank you to my chief of staff, Pedro Carrillo, who has been working with me on this project since day one. Thanks again to everyone who supports the work that went into these results, and I ask all of my colleagues to stand with me today. That concludes discussion of general orders. Report of special committees? Madam. None. Madam Public Advocate. Reports of standing committees? Sorry. I believe Councilmember Lander wanted to speak on his bill as part of the for hire vehicle package. Councilmember Lander? Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. I apologize. I was just count uh, letting Councilmember Levin go first. Uh, thank you. I'll be brief, hopefully. I want to just uh, add my voice. I'm proud to be part of this package of for hire vehicle legislation that the Speaker and Chair Diaz and Council Member Levin have crafted together. It has really been a thoughtful and data-driven process with a great deal of listening to stakeholders with the goal of getting the balance right between plummeting driver pay, growing congestion, the need for dramatically expanded access for people with disabilities, while continuing to provide high quality service to New Yorkers who need it. And we don't take that lightly. We know that app-based FHV service has been a real game changer for many families, for people in the outer boroughs, for people of color who couldn't get a cab before. It has made a difference and we've got a package that's gonna keep providing that service, but also attend to some very real other issues. And the one that my legislation 890B focuses on is that issue of driver pay. Two-thirds of app-based FHV drivers are full-time folks. These are folks who are trying to earn a living, overwhelmingly immigrants and people of color, 85% of whom are not earning a living wage, 40% of whom earn so little that they qualify for Medicaid despite driving 10, 12, 15 hours a day. 890B will make New York City the first city in the country to mandate a living wage for Uber and Lyft drivers. They will have to earn $17.22 an hour based on this thorough study commissioned by the Taxi and Limousine Commission, the equivalent of $15 an hour for independent contractors. It means a significant increase of likely $5,000 a year for folks struggling to pay their rent and feed their families while they work hard to provide transportation services to folks in New York City. The commission looked at what the impact would be as a result of this regulation, an additional 12 to 15 seconds that you might have to wait to get that Uber or Lyft, and I would just submit to you, boy, 12 seconds is long enough to wait to lift tens of thousands of hardworking New Yorkers out of poverty. I won't repeat all the thank yous that uh, Councilmember Levin and others said. I would like to add a thank you to my policy director, Annie Levers, who worked very hard on this package. Um, it's an honor to be part of it. It really does get the balance right, and I hope my colleagues will join us in voting yes. Thank you. That concludes discussion of general orders. Report of special committees? None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing, Intro 965A, Licenses for the Sale of Cigarettes. Amended and coupled to general orders. Report of the Committee on Finance, Preconsidered Reso 469, Hudson Yards. Uh, coupled to general orders. Preconsidered Reso 472, Transparency Resolution. 
couple of the general orders. Pre-considered LUs 173 and Reso 481 and LU 174 and Reso 482, various applications. Couple of the general orders. Report of the committee on four higher vehicles intros for 144B, 634B, 838C, 890B, and 958A, four higher vehicle drivers. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the committee on land use, LUs 135 and 136. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Rule 11.70B of the Rules of the Council and Section 197D of the New York City Charter. Excuse me. L excuse me. LU 137 and Reso 483, disposition of three city-owned properties. Couple of general orders. LU 138, Waterfront Access, Harlem River. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Rule 11.70B of the Rules of the Council and Section 197D of the New York City Charter. <clears throat> LU, excuse me, LU 139 and Reso 484 through LU 141 and Reso 486, various applications. Coupled to general orders. LU 142 and Reso 487, Sidewalk Cafe. Coupled to be filed pursuant to letter of withdrawal. LU 144 and Reso 488 through LU 147 and Reso 491, special permit and zoning amendments. Coupled to general orders. LU 148. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Rule 11.70B of the Rules of the Council and Section 197D of the New York City Charter. <clears throat> LU 149 and Reso 492 through LU 156 and Reso 495, various applications. Couple to general orders. LU 166 and Reso 496 and LU 167 and Reso 497, zoning amendments. Couple to be filed pursuant of letter of withdrawal. LU 169 and Reso 498, sidewalk cafe. Motion to disapprove. LU 170 and Reso 499, sidewalk cafe. Couple to general orders. LU 171 and Reso 500 and LU 172 and Reso 501, sidewalk cafe. Couple to general Orders. Report of the Committee on Parks and Recreation, pre-considered intro 1087, Jean-Jacques Dessalines Boulevard. Couple to general orders. Report of the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections, M77 and Reso 502, appro approving the appointment of Dr. Mitchell Katz, New York City Board of Health. Couple to general orders. Pre-considered M89 and Reso 503, approving the designation of Nathan N. Joseph, Civilian Complaint Review Board. Couple to general orders. General order calendar, intro 720. Laid Site over. Laid over. LU 135 and Reso 504 through LU 148 and Reso 507. Coupled to general orders. Resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. Coupled on general orders, and at this time, I will ask for a roll, roll call vote on all of the items on today's general order calendar. Quiet in the chambers, please, as we take a roll call vote. <clears throat> Adams. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Intro 144B. Uh, moved me greatly as I have a large percentage of for hire vehicles and drivers in my district of Southeast Queens. I'd like to thank my colleagues who took the lead on this package of legislation and I'd like to share an excerpt from my August 1st New York Times op-ed. Professional drivers, more than 90 percent of whom are immigrants of color, once earned a middle-class living but now face eviction, bankruptcy, and even hunger. In the last year, six of them have committed suicide. There is no doubt that New Yorkers benefit from for hire vehicles, especially those in parts of the city like my district in Southeast Queens, where regular taxis are few. The cap will allow the city time to study how many cars we really need to meet consumer demand while maintaining full-time driver incomes. App drivers and those working in the traditional yellow cab industry are largely one and the same. Drivers go back and forth between the sectors as they struggle to earn a living, and our solutions must address the crisis for all drivers. While the Council works toward economic fairness in the industry, it will continue to organize to stop discrimination by drivers. Last week, under the leadership of Council Member Donovan Richards, it created the Office of Inclusion at the Taxi and Limousine Commission, which will examine accusations of bias by drivers. To combat bias against black passengers in particular, I hope the City Council will take up legislation to require all licensed for hire and yellow cab drivers to participate in civil rights and racial justice training. 
economic and racial justice must go hand in hand, and the legislation to regulate the app dispatch sector will help us to achieve both. With this, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Ampri Samuel. Aye on all. Ayala. Aye on all. Barron. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you. Uh, first, I want to say, you know, my sympathy goes out to those drivers who have taken their life, and certainly it brings, um, highlights the situation and the extremities to which they went to bring our attention to that. I think that the package of bills in the main is a good one, and I'm voting for the package with the exception of 144B. In my community, from the time that I was little years ago, uh, we did not see yellow cabs unless we were coming from the airport and you got a yellow taxi to bring you home. So from that need, the ingenuity and the resourcefulness of people led to the cabs that you could call. You put in a call and they would come and pick you up. And now it has expanded to where we have the app hails and people get serviced in that way. This industry that has expanded has provided a great service. And I think that perhaps if a study had been done prior to the legislation, we would see what it is in fact we needed to do to bring some equity to the situation. I think that my community will be hindered, suffered, and not have services that they need with this, so I'm voting against 144B. And also I'm voting against um, 135 through 140 land use and 149 and 150 land use. Here too, I think that as we talk about affordable housing and where we have 50% or more of the housing that will be coming in at market rate, we are not addressing the issue of homelessness and people who need housing, which is a larger majority of the city than those who can afford to pay the market rate. So for those reasons, I'm voting no on those bills. Thank you. Thank you. Borelli. I and all accept M89, 144, and 890. Thank you. Brannon. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Yes. Uh, on 144B, uh, my colleagues and I would never vote in favor of any measure uh, that we believed would negatively affect communities of color or people in the outer boroughs. Um, and that's why there's a very important piece of this legislation that if it turns out we were wrong, we can fix it immediately. Uh, I'm a fan of disruptive technology. I'm a fan of Uber. I use Uber. No one's trying to kill Uber. We're just trying to get a handle uh, on this industry and make sure that there's some equity here and some fairness. And uh, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Cabrera. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. I want to congratulate Council Members Dia, Lambda, and Levine uh, for this combination of bills that are going to alleviate a uh, problem that uh, we find often in my district where we have a lot of drivers. Nowadays, we have drivers that are making on average only $32,000 a year. A friend of mine who goes to my church, working seven days a week, 10 hours a day, He's 68 years old, and he's struggling, and we need to do something. And I'm glad that uh, the combination of all these bills, because not one of these bills can do it alone. So I want to thank uh, the sponsors and all those who are going to be voting on these bills. I'll be voting I and all with the section of intro 958. Thank you. Thank you. Cohen. Uh, I am voting no on pre-considered intro 1087 and I on all either items on general orders. Thank you. Konstantinidis. I on all. Carnegie. I on all except 144. Deutsch. I on all. Diaz. I on Drum. I. Espinal. I. Eugene. I vote aye on all. Gibson. 
Permission to briefly explain my vote? Yes. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate, and good afternoon to all my colleagues. Um, I certainly want to extend my congratulations to our colleagues who have introduced very important bills uh, on this day. Uh, Councilmember Rivera on the Tech Hub project in her district, and certainly the for hire vehicle legislation and the package that's been led by our chair, Councilmember Diaz, Councilmember Lander, Councilmember Levin. Um, I want to acknowledge the hard work of the staff um, that really made today happen. Um, recognizing that every bill is not perfect, we do have to find a way to find common ground and achieve uh, a real balance, knowing that these issues are very sensitive um, and very delicate, and we certainly want to approach it from the right way. And certainly as a council member in the West Bronx, representing hundreds of residents and constituents that are Uber drivers, that also work for bases and other options, it's heartbreaking to know that many of them are receiving less than minimum wage and they're struggling to survive. Um, it's unacceptable in the greatest city. And I do know that this, these bills, a lot of work has really been done to get us to this place. And once the bills are passed and codified, that doesn't mean our work stops. It means that every stakeholder remains in the conversation and we still have a voice, but we truly believe at the end of the day that this package is the best package put forth with a lot of input, a lot of detail. We know everyone will not be happy, but truly we are protecting workers and giving them options and making sure that they can actually live and take care of themselves and their families. So I want to recognize my colleagues for leading today package and certainly want to recognize Councilmember Rodriguez knowing that it was not easy to come to a rezoning at this juncture um, but I want to congratulate you and your team on coming up with the most balanced uh, rezoning that you could achieve for your district um, and with that I will be voting aye on all thank you thank you <clears throat> Joan I permission to explain my vote yes I had the honor and privilege of serving on the TLC for a number of years before I ran for office. Uh, on 144B, we've already experienced the lack of service in the outer boroughs. It was during TLC's regulation that allowed it to happen. And I'm not sure when we decided to put a freeze or a cap or a pause on something to do a study. Typically, we perform studies, and that'll determine the course of action that we should take. Based on those reasons and my experience, as well as the experience that I had last night, as I returned with my family from vacation, I don't have Uber and I don't have the app, but my son said, I'll take care of this dad, and he summoned an Uber from the airport that would take us home. I enjoyed my conversation with a young man from India who was in his senior year of a university who was an Uber driver part-time because of his internship, his paid internship had ended. And this was the only means that he can find the money necessary to meet ends. We're not realizing the, those that are relying on Uber as a part-time job or as an additional source of income. A freeze or a pause or a cap without a study that would determine clearly what we should focus on and what corrective measures are needed has been sidelined. We're also not taking consideration of families that rely on the earned income from those part-timers just so they can pay their car payments and their insurance payments. Because without that extra income, they wouldn't have the luxury and the privilege of owning a car in New York City. For those reasons and many more, and the comments and, that I received from my constituents, I vote no on 144B and I on the rest. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Hold it. I vote aye on all except uh, voting no on intro 1087. Kalos. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Councilmember Ben Kalos and I don't own a car. Like 80% of New Yorkers, I use whatever I can get to get where I'm going, whether that's the subway, 
which sometimes isn't running, or the buses, which sometimes aren't running, or cabs, which sometimes just aren't there, or e-hail, which sometimes has surges or other reasons that that might not be there, or city bike, where the dock might be empty, or sadly, more often than not, just giving up and walking wherever I may be going, however many miles it may be. And I'm a free and open source software developer, and I support innovation. And I have always supported parts of these legislative packages that would improve pay and conditions for drivers, because that is our role. And as many of you know, I was initially opposed to placing a moratorium for new for hire vehicles. Um, I want to say I really appreciate uh, our speaker, Corey Johnson, who really took the time to meet with me on this issue and uh, talk about the broad exemption for new accessible vehicles, uh, which we were just not seeing in the for hire vehicle industry. And I think he made an excellent point that the council giveth and can taketh away. And uh, we are commissioning a study. We are closely reviewing the Taxi and Limousine Commission's quarterly reports to ensure we remain on track without harming existing service. I trust the study will be informative, and I honestly believe that utilization standard may be uh, the best approach. I'm also a little concerned because it's four years later, and in 2014 I introduced uh, uh, introduction 574, which said, why do we need a middleman? Why do we need a medallion owner? Why do we need Ubers or other folks when we could just let anyone use a universal e hail app to just put out their app, just like you raise your hand for a cab, and have everyone compete for your ride? Everybody wins. The drivers win, the passengers win, and uh, I, I think that would be a great way to move forward. Uh, for all of those reasons, I uh, vote aye on all. Thank you. Cool. I will aye on all. Kozlowitz. May I please be excused to explain my vote? Yes. I do not drive. I have never driven. And I depend on Uber and all the app dispatch cars. Let me tell you, in 2015, Uber did a campaign. Nice picture of me. <laughs> <laughs> Very angry. <laughs> and said that Council Member Koslowitz has a war on Uber, will kill 10,000 jobs. That, I'm so powerful. <laughs> but, when in 2015, when the city first considered reforms, Uber waged a campaign that sent out to all my constituents. And Uber lies, really lies, because today estimates vary, but generally agree that in 2015, there were between 15,000 and 18,000 app dispatch, dispatch cars roaming the city to city. Today, there are approximately 110,000 with Uber accounting for a little over 75,000 of them. The result, much greater congestion in and around our city, increased pollution and a whole class of workers being exploited. And with over 75,000 Uber vehicles, simply put, there are too many drivers riding around without passengers. Yesterday, coming into the city from Queens, I counted at least 20 Ubers. And out of the 20 Ubers that I counted, five of them had passengers, the others were empty. So drivers end up making less than the minimum wage while Uber's corporate profits steadily rise. They're worth $70.5 billion. That's a lot of money. The council has a duty to all New Yorkers to make sense out of this out of control situation. The proposed bills try to do just that 
without reducing the current number of Uber cars available to the public. You can send all the mail you want. My office received 3,800 phone calls from people telling me to vote no. Well, the Uber and all the other cars, I vote yes on all general couple orders. Lance Chambers. Aye. Lander. Levin. Permission to explain my vote? Thank you. So, uh, first, I just want to say thank you, Karen, for your vote and for your words uh, today and in 2015. You know, not, never to mess with Karen Kozlowitz. That's clear. Um, I just want to also thank uh, my colleague Adrienne Adams for her, uh, her very good words as well on, um, on this legislation um, and her uh, very thoughtful op-ed in, in the New York Times uh, last week. And then uh, just to uh, speak very quickly about uh, uh, the point brought up by Councilmember Brannon, um, that that's true, that there's, there's language in this legislation that allows for the TLC if they see in a geographic area uh, that there is a drop in service or a need for service and it won't add to congestion in that geographic area. They have the authority under this legislation uh, to uh, add new licenses for those geographic areas. So um, just want to make sure that that is clear, that that's written into the legislation and, uh, and, and uh, the TLC uh, has the ability to respond to that. So again, I want to thank all of my colleagues uh, on their support and with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Levine. Vote aye. Mizell. Yes. Men <laughs> Menchaca. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Moya. Aye on all. Thank you. Perkins. Aye on all. Powers. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you. Um, I, I represent Midtown Manhattan, which has been for, for years, but certainly now, crippled by congestion. And I think many of us know there are a lot of contributing factors to congestion, whether it is street closures and events or other things, buildings going up, but certainly the explosion of for hire vehicles in the last few years is a contributing factor. I think that is undeniable. And what measure we can talk about, we can debate how much, but certainly when you walk through my district every single day, you see T plates everywhere. And I acknowledge that I have a lot of people who take advantage of the service and enjoy it and use it, um, but even their commutes are getting slower and slower. Um, as um, I remember this debate in 2015, although I wasn't here, and I remember the debate back and forth, but since 2015, the rate of vehicles and the, and the uh, explosion of vehicles has only, think I, may, I think, made this problem worse. And I think this is a time to take a pause and look at um, the contributing factors, including the rampant and explosion of growth in the for hire vehicle industry. Um, to me, the th some of the things we're looking at, like wages and utilization of the vehicles, are really key to getting to this problem, making sure that certainly drivers are making enough money and are, um, and are making a living wage here in the city, but certainly also making sure that those vehicles are being used efficiently every single day and that they're not, that they're occupied and they are being uh, efficient on the, in the road. Um, I think this is a step in the right direction. I wasn't a victim of the mailers in 2015, but I do remember this debate well, and I think this is the right time to take a moment and take a breather and to think about it. And certainly, as others said, it doesn't take vehicles off the road. It doesn't say that you can still have vehicles and the services, but certainly in my conversations with the speaker and all the staff here, they are very sensitive to the smaller businesses that might get hurt or impacted by it to any reflection in consumer behavior that, that might impact the consumers, and certainly any other things that might be stresses in this. And in all the conversations I had with them, I felt confident that they were very good and sensitive to those needs and that they, we would continue to look at them as we move forward. Um, I will say that I know and I have the confidence here in this body and in the TLC that as we uh, look at the impact, as we look at utilization, wages, 
the, the amount of vehicles, certainly if there's an impact that we believe is positive, we will continue to have a discussion, revisit it. We will look at the pause, the utilization, everything else to make sure that we get this right. And I ask this body to commit to that, to make sure that we continue to evaluate and make sure we get this right in the future. I have confidence we will. I have, do have confidence that the TLC will get this right. I have confidence that our speaker and the chairs of the committees will continue to look at this and get this right. But certainly, I believe we have to do something now to make sure that we don't can keep contributing to a problem and we actually have a way forward and we take time to do that. Um, I'll just end by saying I want to say thank you to the speaker for being thoughtful when he talked to me and talked to other members about what the impacts might be in our districts and explained and also listened to what the impacts might be. I want to thank and congratulate Council Member Levin and Lander and, and Diaz and all the others and certainly the staff of all those respective staffs, uh, staff of those respective members who worked very hard on this and put a lot of effort into this. I will say it may not be perfect. We have a lot of work to do around congestion. I think we should pass congestion pricing. We should, in Albany, uh, you, can, you can apply to that. I think we need congestion pricing. I think we need to look at the streets that are occupied by new construction and many other factors. But we certainly shouldn't abdicate our responsibility to do something here today because of those factors. So I am voting aye on all. And uh, I thank the staff. I thank Laura Pope. I thank Chris Lynn. I thank all the, all the staff of all the different members. Thank you to the speaker for being thoughtful. And I do know that he will, he's committed and all of us commit to keep looking at this in the future and to do something uh, if we feel like it's headed in the wrong direction. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, right, Madam no. Public Advocate, mm -hmm. uh, I just want to interject and say one thing. I know that when we had to uh, clear the balcony, uh, there were folks who were not involved in the protest uh, and the disruption who had to leave today. And some of those folks who are not able to be in the chambers right now are loved ones and family members of um, drivers who took their own lives over the last seven months. And they were here, they showed up today, they came here to watch this vote, which is, I'm sure, a very emotional day for these family members. And so I know that they are uh, watching this on TV now. Um, so I want to thank them for their courage, for being here. Uh, and apologize that they're not able to be in the chambers with us right now as the vote happens. Um, and, uh, you know, our heart uh, really goes out to all of them and the enormous amount of pain they've experienced uh, since losing a loved one suddenly and tragically. And I wanted to, to note that, uh, that um, they came here and they were in the balcony, but they're no longer able to be in the room with us. But I want to thank them for being, them here, being here today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Reynoso. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Uh, first, I want to say that I also ride Uber and Lyft. And unlike Karen in 2015, um, I did get a mailer, Karen. My mailer said, thank you, Antonio Reynoso. Uh, and it had a really nice picture of me, actually. Um, so obviously, I'm a big fan of um, app-based um, app hails. Uh, but what we hear and what we see today is truly what I consider a balance uh, and a fair uh, push for legislation and regulation. It is a one-year pause. It is not a pause forever. Um, there are places in the legislation that speak to um, allowing TLC to make changes should they see um, negative things happen. Um, I think that we are a city that uh, actually needs these hills and these app-based hills um, uh, and cabs. I want to make sure we can take advantage of that. I do think the, the reason I was opposed to it last time was because we need to make sure that we can provide services to black and brown people in the outer, in the outer uh, boroughs. Uh, but I don't think that putting a cap on over 80,000 licenses is gonna stop that from happening in my district. I feel very confident we're gonna figure this out. Um, I'll be very vigilant to make sure that the TLC follows through on any, uh, any errors that we might have caused here today. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing in one year the study be completed and uh, us finally getting to regulate an industry that truly needed um, to be regulated. So again, I want to thank I want to thank everyone, including uh, the sponsors, but especially uh, Councilmember Corey Johnson, who um, I really believe thought was very thoughtful about this process. And as a, a previous supporter and still a supporter, I'm still going to vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you, Richards. Permission to explain my vote. Yes. Uh, today votes vote marks a critical step in reigning in an industry that for far too long has dictated 
the rules of the game to legislative bodies across the country. Today, I'm proud to be part of a body led by Speaker Johnson that is sending a message to billion dollar companies that have aggressively waged a public campaign against raising standards for their own drivers and regulations that would rein in the oversaturation of their cars on our city streets that have added to an ever-growing congestion problem. In New York City, there should be one set of rules for everyone, and no corporation should feel that they are entitled to a monopoly at the expense of people's lives. Furthermore, let's be clear that the council is not taking away service today, as my constituents uh, have emailed me. We, are, we, will, we look forward to ensuring that the TLC addresses service gaps in underserved areas if this issue arises, while also adding to the severe lack of accessible taxis for people with disabilities. And as the, the sponsor said, there, are certainly, there certainly is flexibility in these bills. With that being said, I am going to vote yes on all the bills before us today, including the moratorium. However, as we move to provide a lifeline to the taxi industry, we must also recognize the pain they have caused communities of color with ride refusals. Yes, bias indeed is what fueled communities of color to download apps like Lyft and Uber, because they don't leave us with our hands flapping out in the wind, stranded on street corners across our city. I look forward to further conversations with the TLC and hopefully swift passage of intro 1079, which we're introducing today, to codify, to codify an Office of Inclusion within the TLC. This bill is a step in the right direction, in my opinion, but let's be clear, there's no legislation that will serve as a cure-all for decades of denied rides and bias. At the end of the day, we're all just trying to get to work and get home to our families and friends, and everyone deserves to be treated with the same respect, no matter who they are or where they are going. I want to thank Speaker Johnson and certainly the mayor for their commitment to this. And with that, again, I vote aye on all the bills. Thank you. Madam Public Advocate, I was remiss in my comments earlier today. Uh, Councilman Richards played a very important role in this process, even though none of the bills he was the prime sponsor of, he was uh, very thoughtful in trying to address a very serious issue that has affected our city for far too long. And he stepped up and got involved to try to uh, bring some resources and some real enforcement moving forward to ensure that people who are victims of discrimination don't have to suffer those indignities and hopefully we can prevent those moving forward. And I was remiss in not thanking him earlier, so I want to thank you, Councilman Richards. Thank you. Rivera. I'll probably vote aye on all. Thank you. Rodriguez. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Uh, primero que todo, quiero dar las gracias a todos los taxistas de Nueva York por el apoyo y el trabajo que brindan. En los últimos cuatro años hemos estado haciendo cambios importantes. Hoy con el, la dirección del chairman del comité, Chairman Díaz, el, el apoyo del speaker. Hoy venimos también a reducir la, la multa que recibe un taxista de, de los eh, 10 mil dólares. Lo estamos haciendo porque de la misma forma que establecimos la licencia universal, que establecimos también elevar a cuatro puntos la cantidad de puntos que puede reducir un taxista cuando toma la clase de defensa. Hoy entendemos que es lo correcto reducir la multa que hasta este momento estaban en 10 mil dólares. What we are doing today is leveling the playing field to the taxi industry so that those 15,000 yellow taxi medallion owners, including the 6,000 in the Pitbull medallion owners, are able to know that they can that they get the support for the council. Those liberal taxi uh, company that they should be able to know that he, we are here to support them, and for the rest of the industry to know that there's opportunity for everyone to do well here. In the other hand, when it comes to the inward rezoning, I want to thank Chair, Chairman Salamanca and Moya for all the support. Everyone here that has been working with all the land use team, George, Rajud, and James, the great advisory team that I have, Professor Peñamora, Barbara, Yvonne, Charlie, and all the members of the Northern Manhattan Agenda. Especially also, I want to thank my family for being there in this difficult moment as someone that had not done a rezoning in nine years. I believe that this rezoning was necessary in order to preserve our community as a working class community. Finally, big thanks 
to uh, Speaker Johnson and, and the Chief of Staff, Jesso Goldman, without their support and their trust, I can tell you that I would not be voting for this rezoning. It is taking their word that I'm using to be able to know that with the support of Mayor de Blasio and their team, there's this thing, little thing pending there, including capital to senior center, capital to build a, a new campus at the George Washington High School, that I hope that working with our team in this administration, we will be able to fulfill the commitment that we make. With that, I vote aye. Thank you. Rose. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. I say ditto to Council Member Richard's remarks, and with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Rosenthal. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. On whole, the four hire vehicle package of legislation is thoughtful, and it's a good one. I do think it's important to note that if we could count on the MTA, and they actually addressed the serious problems of transit deserts, then we would not be in this situation. Hmm. And further, I would add, I believe we could do so within the amount of spending that they spend today. Their problem is one of mismanagement and uh, spending of resources they don't have to spend and could be directed to uh, fixing the MTA today. But with that in mind, I want to make two points about the moratorium. The first is that the moratorium exempts wheelchair accessible vehicles. This is a smart safety valve, and more importantly, it is such a powerful incentive to finally start adding accessible vehicles to the road. I implore Uber and others to take advantage of this opportunity. I also want to make clear that we will be watching the TLC very closely to make sure they are focused on the needs of all New Yorkers in all boroughs. Racism has meant that communities of color have been denied access to taxis for far too often and for far too long. For all its faults of the business model on these app-based companies, blowing that open has been incredibly uh, a positive factor. This legislation requires the TLC to suspend the moratorium in specific communities if they see it negatively affecting availability, and we will hold them to it. With permission, just another half a minute. I do vote no on intro 958 with respect. Illegal street hails remain a tremendous problem in Manhattan, and even in the context of this package, I can't support reducing the fines for them. I also ask to be signed on to uh, intro 634-B. Finally, I want to take a moment to congratulate my stated neighbor, Councilwoman Rivera, not just on the Tech Hub, but on the inclusionary housing project on 33rd Street, and to Councilmember Rodriguez for pushing hard and making the best deal possible for his community. Lastly, I want to thank my phenomenal intern, Lucy Miriam, whose last week is this week and who will be sorely missed. So I vote aye on all except for 958, and I thank you for that. Thank you. Salamanca. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you. Uh, first, I want to congratulate my colleagues, Council Member Rodriguez and Rivera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the talker. Um, on their uh, land use projects that we're voting on today. Uh, the inward rezoning is not perfect. No rezoning is, but there's a lot of big wins that should not be overlooked or lost in the conversation. This rezoning will create and preserve thousands of a deeply affordable units, grant more equitable access to the waterfront and green spaces, and inject millions into STEM programs, schools, and cultural institutions. The reality is that we need to get more apartments online so that the thousands of New Yorkers struggling to live in a city where wages aren't increasing nearly as fast as rents are rising can have a place to live without fear of displacement. And this rezoning takes a step in that direction. As I said at the Land Use Committee last week, 
I am disappointed that the administration was not able to deliver on including specific labor language and worker protections through the sponsor review process. For future rezonings and land use application, responsible contractor language and worker safety protection must be an integral component. On the Tech Hub vote today, I congratulate Councilmember Rivera for her leadership and vision on the project. We as a city need to prepare our workforce and create qualified pipeline of talent prepared to take on these new tech jobs while encouraging innovation. And finally, I would like to thank the land use staff for their tire tireless work, and I vote aye on all. Torres. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. No longer will the City of New York stand by idly while unfettered growth in the for hire sector causes ever worsening traffic congestion, ever rising environmental degradation, and ever deepening human suffering, including a string of suicides, mm -hmm. as well as improving accessibility, equity, and mobility, labor standards, and environmental standards. The law will modernize the city's outdated framework for regulating for hire vehicles a framework that had been rendered obsolete by the disruptive growth of high volume for hire services, especially Uber. Even though the legislative package includes a freeze on new for hire vehicle licenses contained within it are two broad exceptions. The first is an exemption for wheelchair accessible vehicles. What critics call a cap could just as easily be seen as a requirement for accessibility. The second is an exemption for vehicles in underserved neighborhoods to be determined by TLC. Uh, as Councilmember Reynoso noted earlier, those of us who are committed to geographically and racially equitable access to services must be vigilant to hold TLC accountable for ensuring sufficient service in the outer boroughs in keeping with the Council's intent. Setting a vehicle utilization standard will create for the first time an incentive for companies like Uber to be efficient in their use of road space to relocate their vehicles from congested areas like the Central Business District to the outer boroughs where the need is far more pronounced. I am confident that a vehicle utilization standard is a game changer. If set correctly and carefully, it will lead to a balanced fleet of for hire vehicles and a balanced distribution of those for hire vehicles throughout the city. And I am equally confident that a standard for minimum pay will end once and for all a savage race to the bottom in the livelihood of drivers struggling mightily to survive. Speaker Corey Johnson, Council Members Diaz, Lander, and Levin deserve immense credit for spearheading a comprehensive reform that will achieve a better balance between supply and demand, between the incomes of workers and the profits of corporations, between the public good and private interests. With that said, I proudly vote aye on all. Thank you. Traeger. Permission to expand my vote? Yes. Thank you, public advocate. I, I first want to uh, thank uh, Speaker Johnson, uh, his chief of staff, Jason Goldman, and uh, also Laura Popa, uh, for being very accessible and responsive to a number of my questions uh, with regards to this package of bills. Um, there, my, some of my colleagues uh, mentioned before about studies. There have been previous studies on the impact for our vehicles have, uh, have had on New York City. Uh, what makes, I believe, this approach unique is that at the conclusion of this study pause period, there will be a set of, re of recommendations and regulations made. Um, and I believe that this City Council reserves the right to use its oversight power uh, if the regulations go too far or don't go far enough. That's, that's a part of our job and responsibility, and TLC has a job and a responsibility. So I believe that the speaker and, uh, and, and, and the bill sponsors found the right balance to make sure that there is no sacred cow, that industries uh, need to understand that there is a need for sensible regulations in place. Uh, the numbers for high vehicles have skyrocketed. Uh, we understand their transportation needs, but there's also other issues baked in, into these bills with regards to labor uh, uh, standards. So I, I, I think that the speaker and the bills have found the right balance. And with regards to the taxi industry, we also need more from them as well. As my colleagues noted, there has been do there have been documented cases of denial of service to people of color and denial of service to people in the outer boroughs. That's got to change. That must change. We expect better from all stakeholders in this conversation. 
so with that, um, I vote aye on all with the exception of intro 958A. Thank you. Thank you. Ulrich. Madam Public Advocate, may be briefly excused to explain my vote? Yes. All right, thank you very much. My colleagues, I represent the Great Borough of Queens, and I represent many neighborhoods uh, which have been called by many uh, transportation deserts. We don't have the luxury that some of my other colleagues have of having multiple subway lines beneath our feet and adequate bus service. In fact, we don't have adequate public transportation in so many parts of my district and in so many other neighborhoods throughout the outer boroughs. Uh, that is why I'm voting against intro 144B, uh, because I think that by putting the one-year moratorium on new for hire vehicle licenses, we're going to be leaving thousands of New Yorkers stranded who rely on Uber, who rely on Lyft, who rely on it to get to school, to get to work, to get from point A to point B, because our public transportation system and the MTA has failed them. Unfortunately, the yellow cabs in New York City, it's a very nostalgic thing, but it is a declining industry with an outdated business model. And by placing the cap on new licenses for, for, for higher vehicles, that would be the equivalent of the City Council deciding that we're going to put a cap on Netflix subscriptions because we're worried about blockbusters that are closing. Technology changes. Society changes. The economy changes. This is a free market, and we have to be able to move with the market. The fact that we're now capping for one year, instead of waiting for the study to come back, we're also going to be limiting thousands of New Yorkers from bringing in extra income that they work hard for, that they need to sustain themselves and to support their families. And so I am voting against 144B. I'm voting in favor of the other pieces of legislation that are included in this package because I think they have uh, they've struck the right balance, but 144B, I think, does a disservice to the thousands of New Yorkers in the outer borough who rely on these app-based uh, transportation alternatives and also is going to hurt financially a lot of New Yorkers who are simply struggling to make ends meet. Thank you very much. Thank you. Williams. May I make you explain my vote? Yes. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Uh, I am a user of the platforms, Lyft to be particular. Uh, my uh, brother has uh, driven uh, before, and albeit not in this state. Um, I also have got a yellow cab suspended uh, for not picking me up, primarily because I was black, for about six months. Uh, so I do want to always just admonish the yellow cab service for not providing the service needed in all five boroughs, and also not picking people up because of their race. Yet and still, uh, I believe the city government has failed the drivers and their industry and this year long cap, while we figured out it forward is, uh, is very valuable. Um, I have not seen any evidence to suggest that prices will go up for users or that this will hurt certain areas. It seems to me if there's 80 to 100,000 uh, people on the street now uh, and we have a cap for a year uh, and only 40% of the cars are filled at any time, uh, there won't be any dereliction of service. Uh, people might just get more money if they're a driver because they'll be able to pick up more folks. I am glad that the council is not intending to take away service from the outer boroughs. Uh, we've given the TLC the power to uh, address the cap if New Yorkers do begin to lose those service. And if I am here, hopefully I won't be, but if I am, I plan to hold them accountable so that all communities have access. I do want to thank all the civil rights groups who raised issues such as NAN and NAACP uh, about the concerns that I've raised, and I'm glad that has led to an Office of Inclusion. Uh, but just for the uh, Netflix and Blockbuster comparison, it's rather if the government had specifically told Blockbuster, you have to do all of these hoops to survive, and then allowed Netflix in without any of those hoops. And so right now, I believe we are just balancing it. Uh, I think everyone agrees there should be something done. The best way to do that is this pause. I think one year will not harm everyone. Uh, lastly, I do want to uh, uh, say thank you to Councilman Rodriguez, because I know this is very hard, and he did do a lot of work. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I came in expecting to vote no on this. I still can't support it, because I think uh, we are not doing as much as we should be for affordable housing. That has been my mantra. We have failed uh, when it comes to MIH. I hope, like this Uber cap, this body will reopen MIH because it's not producing what it should be. However, uh, I, everyone knows I encourage protests, so I have no problem with that. But I did see a picture that disturbed me, uh, which was a death threat sent to my colleague 
of someone cutting someone's throat. Uh, mm. I believe that is too far. As someone who's received unsavory um, mail, I know how uncomfortable that is. Uh, so I want to change what I was going to vote to no to an abstention, and hopefully um, just to send a notice that we need to have better ways of communicating. Uh, that way is off limits as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so with that, I'll be voting uh, aye on all the rest. Thank you. Jaeger. Madam President, may I be excused to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you. The e hail industry is what they call it now, uh, for hire vehicle uh, is what we've called it here. Um, I think most members here in the council, most New Yorkers recognize that they've provided a valuable service. They still provide a valuable service. The district I represent, um, I can get from my home to the city by subway in 45 minutes. I do that often. Uh, if I want to go from my house to my district office, I can take an hour city, subway, city bus ride, or I can drive there and be there in about 10, 12 minutes. So to the notion that perhaps uh, we don't need these or we want to cap them or we want to drive them out of existence, I think that's uh, falsehood. Uh, it's just not true. Um, what we're doing here is a moratorium. As some of my colleagues have called it, I think it's a valid uh, term. Um, in every civilized society, we have to have regulation. It's what we do here. And every industry needs regulation. To open up a restaurant, needs to be regulated. This is an industry that currently doesn't have regulation. It doesn't mean they're bad. It just means that they have to be regulated. So that's what we're doing. Now, I would have preferred that the language in 144, um, instead of an optional may uh, with respect to Section E, where the Taxi and Limousine Commission may issue uh, additional licenses upon a determination that out of borough service is being uh, uh, hurt, I would prefer that it be shall. Um, but I also know that, um, as Mr. Speaker indicated when he spoke uh, earlier today, and as many of my colleagues did, and as the administration has indicated, that the TLC is aware of the concerns of this council, and I think. The purpose and the intent of this bill is obviously, as Mr. Speaker indicated, not to diminish service to New Yorkers. It's not. It's to simply set up a regulatory system which we're asking all participants to abide by. Um, the, uh, with respect to 890, just uh, another couple of seconds, Madam President. Uh, with respect to 890B, uh, the intent I agree with Unfortunately, it is my position, and, and I think I'm right, and you know, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, uh, but I do not believe that this august body has the legal authority to institute a minimum wage. It doesn't. Otherwise, we'd have done it for other industries. We'd have done it for dishwashers and, and car washers and everything else that we could have done it for, but we didn't. And as some of my colleagues, including the sponsor, uh, indicated that we're talking about people who are essentially, uh, under the IRS uh, Internal Revenue Code, self-employed. Uh, under New York State labor law, they're self-employed. To set a scheme of a minimum wage for people who are self-employed, I do not believe is in the purview of the council. That is something that is reserved for the state on the preemption. And on 890B, I must vote no. Uh, so, Madam, Ad Madam President, I vote uh, aye on all with the exception of 890B with respect to my colleagues uh, who worked very hard on these bills. Uh, I appreciate all of their work. This council has worked very hard on those bills. I also vote no on uh, resolution 472 and introduction 1087. Thank you very much, Madam President. Thank you. Mario. Thank you. Uh, for me, it's simple. We need more transportation options on Staten Island, not less. Um, I can't vote in good conscience to cap a service that has uh, brought a much needed service and transportation option to Staten Island. So with that, I'm voting no on 144B, no on 890B. I'm also voting no on preconsidered 1087 and M89 accompanying Reso 503. Thank you. Combo. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you. It has been an incredible experience today to hear all of the different perspectives today um, on app-based uh, transportation alternatives throughout the city of New York. I think as a body, we have a responsibility and a huge responsibility to communicate information accurately to our constituents. And from what I'm hearing and from what um, I'm hearing from my colleagues, but also constituents, is that somehow we think that um, after today, Uber is no longer going to be available in our communities, or that 
our constituents are now going to be stranded in some way or that they're not going to get service. Where the reality is, Uber as you know it is going to be Uber as you know it. The same services that you have always had are going to be the same services that you're going to have during this time that we're looking to review um, many of these app-based uh, services. So for everyone at home, for everyone that's looking and listening, you are not going to be stranded. Uber is not going away. App-based uh, opportunities are not going to be taken away from us as a community. So I just want people to be clear on that because we may have all types of reasons why we may take the positions that we take, but Uber and many of these other app-based programs are not going to be taken away. We are simply going to look at how to better regulate it, how to better make sure that it's appropriate. And this protects the drivers and their families, because if we allow it to grow in the way that it is, they are going to continue not to be paid in a way that they can support their families and to continue to grow in the city of New York. I also want to commend uh, Councilmember Donis Rodriguez. It takes a commendable amount of courage to come forward and to bring forward resources to your community and to be faced with the level of apprehension, of, of disrespect, of people coming forward and calling you all types of inappropriate names has got to be very difficult when you're looking to do nothing more than to bring incredible resources to a community that has gone underserved for decades. So I commend you. I appreciate you. I know that this took a tremendous amount of courage because you come from the communities, you come from the barrios, you come from neighborhoods that understand what it means not to have. And you've done a tremendous amount of work that will be appreciated in decades to come. So I proudly support you and I vote aye on all. Thank, thank you. you. Speaker Johnson. Uh, thank you. I, I vote aye, of course, on all, but I want to just read one thing before we finish the voting today. This comes from the committee report uh, on the bills that we're voting on in the four-hour vehicle package. And in the committee report, it says, and this is again to the families who are here today, some of whom traveled great distances, the effect of app-based service has been felt by the traditional four-hour vehicle sector. If folks could be quiet for a second. Shh. On February 5th, 2018, Doug Shifter, a livery driver, committed suicide outside of City Hall. Hours before the incident, Mr. Shifter wrote about his experience as a driver, indicating that he had to work more than 100 hours a week to make ends meet. Mr. Shifter blamed mayors for allowing a proliferation of vehicles on the street and blamed the TLC for fines that it imposed. This incident uncovered the previous death of another TLC worker, TLC driver, Danilo Corporan Castillo, who took his life on December 20th, 2017, about two months earlier, after a TLC hearing where he was facing the possibility of having his license revoked. After the death of Mr. Shifter, there were several deaths of other TLC drivers, suicides. On March 16th, 2018, Nikonur Ochisor, a medallion owner and driver, took his life reportedly because of the debt that he was facing. Subsequently, Alfredo Perez, a livery driver, took his own life, though little is known why, but we think it is because of the debt that he was facing. In May of 2018, just a few months ago, Yumin Chow, Kenny Chow, a medallion owner, committed suicide while also facing financial trouble. And in June of 2018, Abdul Saleh, a taxi driver, also committed suicide. There has been a real human impact, a real human impact for us not figuring out how to deal with a regulatory framework that would allow the for hire vehicle industry to exist and grow to meet demand, while at the exact same time ensuring that all workers, all drivers in New York City are able to make ends meet and that we are not abdicating our responsibility by figuring out ways to protect them. We are doing this for many, many reasons here today because it is the right thing to do, but also we do it remembering these individuals whose lives were tragically cut short. And with that, I would eye on all. 
All items on today's general order calendar were adopted by a vote of 45 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions, with the exception of intro 144B, which was adopted by a vote of 39 in the affirmative, six in the negative, and zero abstentions, and land use 135 through 140, and accompanying resolutions, which was adopted by a vote of 43 in the affirmative, one negative, and one abstention, and land use 149 and resolution 492, which was adopted by a vote of 43 in the affirmative, one negative and one abstention, and LU 150 and resolution 493, which was adopted by a vote of 43 in the affirmative, one negative and one abstention, and M89 and resolution 503, which was adopted by a vote of 43 in the affirmative, two negative and zero abstentions, and intro 958A, which was adopted by a vote of 42 in the affirmative, three negative and zero abstentions, and intro 1087 which was adopted by a vote of 41 in the affirmative, four negative and zero abstentions, and intro 890B, which was adopted by a vote of 42 in the affirmative, three negative and zero abstentions, and resolution 472, which was adopted by a vote of 44 in the affirmative, one negative and zero abstentions. Introduction and reading of bills. All bills are referred to committee as indicated on the agenda. There are no resolutions. We'll immediately go into general discussion. There is a revised land use call-up vote, 45 in the affirmative, zero negative. The first general discussion will begin with Councilmember Kalos. Good afternoon. It's nice to be back from taking a, a full paternity leave, and I hope we can get this for all of our city employees, and that folks who have access to it will take it. Introduction 1064 will help New York City's effort to end childhood obesity by replacing soda and other unhealthy drinks as the default beverage when ordering children's meals at fast food establishments in New York City. According to health department data, roughly half of children in New York City are not at a healthy weight and 20 to 25 percent are obese. We know that consumption habits are formed early and we can make a big reduction in obesity, if children grow up with healthier options, instead of soda, this legislation calls for default beverage to be either water, low-fat milk, or 100% juice. Recent polling showed that 87% of New Yorkers support making healthy drinks the default for children, with 81% saying they would be more likely to take their children to a place that has healthier beverage as the default. I want to thank the American Heart Association for their work on this legislation, their partnership to help our kids learn better eating habits, and I encourage my colleagues to sign on. Thank you. Quiet in the chambers. We're still in session. Councilmember Drum. Thank you very much. I'd just like to give a big shout out to my intern, Kara Nowakowski. She's from the Cardozo Law School. She's been working with me in my office since June, and I just want to publicly say thank you to her for all that she's done for my office. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councilmember Koo. Thank you. Today I'm introducing legislation that will develop a cigarette butt receptac uh, receptacle and recycling program in the city of New York. This bill would develop a pilot program of five locations in the city where litter from smoking is a problem and install recycling receptacles and the appropriate signage that will provide for the collection and recycling of cigarette bugs. Cigarette bugs litter our streets, they are harmful to wildlife, they pollute our waterways, and they are detriments to our quality of life. Establishing a recycling program will not only improve the cleanliness of our streets, but it will create a culture of consciousness in our city that the days of just flicking your cigarette butt in the streets are long gone. New Yorkers care about their environments, and this is another way we can make the impact on an age-old public nuisance. I would like to thank Council Members Lander, Kostlovich, and Salamanca for co-sponsoring this effort and I ask my colleagues to join us today in supporting the legislation. I also like to welcome a great youth advocacy organization from my district to the chambers today, the Korean American Civic Empowerment. Welcome to Angel Kim, Diana Kim, and who, who are doing great work to motivate our area's young people to get involved in their communities and to teach them about civic engagement. Finally, I'd like to welcome three of my uh, office summer interns, Grace Wen, Wesley Zhao, and Kathy Shah. They have done tremendous work in my office this last month, working with our local senior centers, helping with constituent services, and learning the inner workings of local government. Thank you 
for all your great work. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Barron. Uh, thank you, Madam Public Advocate. First, I want to make an announcement. This Sunday, we'll be celebrating my mom's 96th birthday. And uh, I'll be sending everybody an announcement. If you're available, you're welcome to come. It'll be at her church. Uh, secondly, I want to acknowledge the passing of Elizabeth Ramos, who was an advocate for those persons with disabilities. She was a resident at Starrett City. There was a power outage, and during that time, although perhaps not related, she did pass, but we wanted to make acknowledgement of that. She was well known to those in the disability or special needs community as an advocate in that regard. <laughs> and finally, in July 2016, off-duty officer Wayne Isaacs shot and killed unarmed Delron Small. He said he had been threatened and punched. However, the video showed another story. Last week, off-duty Sergeant Richard Blake shot unarmed Tavon Santana twice in the head. Sergeant Blake said that he was being robbed. However, the video shows a different story. Sergeant Blake and Tavon, who were known to each other, had an encounter and exchanged words, and Sergeant Blake fired twice, hitting him in the head. And while Tavon lay on the ground, Sergeant Richard Blake dropped an object, supposedly a box cutter, next to the body while it was lying on the ground. Fortunately, Tavon survived. He has a shattered jaw and he does have a bullet lodged in him that cannot be removed. We're calling for Sergeant Blake to be fired. We're calling for an indictment. We're calling for a trial. And based on the findings of that trial, we're calling for him to be sent to jail. No other kinds of shenanigans taking place. And we are told that presently, at the time of this incident, Sergeant Blake was uh, on disciplinary action. As a result of disciplinary action, uh, he was um, on probation, even though he was a sergeant. The conditions that the findings had placed him on probation, and we believe if that's the case, he doesn't have the entitlements of anything other than a rookie, and he can be fired. And the family and the community are calling for him to be fired and other actions to, to be taken. Thank you. Council Member Levin. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Uh, I just want to uh, acknowledge, I was remiss earlier in not acknowledging uh, my staff, on uh, my council staff, who worked very hard on this legislation. Elizabeth Adams, Jonathan Boucher, and Edward Paulino, and Rami Metal, uh, my former chief of staff who worked on this legislation back in 2015. I also want to acknowledge my four incredible interns this summer, I Queen Smart, Lori Ann Simpson, Seamus Hubbard, and Shannon Ong. I wish them all well in their endeavors this coming school year. And with that, have a great rest of the summer, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Williams. Thank you. Uh, first, I do want to uh, just uh, call out the name of Bill Howard, who passed away today. Uh, he, I'm sorry, this week. Sunday. He was a uh, staff member to Shirley Chisholm, uh, an indelible member and president of Riatica, the West Indian American uh, Carnival Day Association. Uh, he will be sorely missed. He was a wealth of knowledge uh, and a great advocate for black and Caribbean uh, history. Uh, I also just want to thank everyone who was supportive of me uh, during the trial with uh, Ravi Ragbear and me standing in front of an ambulance to protect him. Uh, he called me and said, uh, I'm sorry that you got found uh, guilty of one of those counts. And I said, I am not because you are still here. Uh, unlike one of the articles I saw, this was not uh, to try to start uh, or encourage any kind of uh, revolution, <laughs> so to speak. It was to show that we have to get out of our comfort zone uh, I think I achieved that, and also, of course, achieved uh, Ravi still being here. Uh, I do want to say thank you to my interns, Olu Oloditin, uh, Kishon George, Zane Willoughby, Jalil Rush, Jade Glasgow, and Hong Jiang Xiao. I think Zane is still here, so thank you so much. And lastly, I'd like to say to anyone who can hear me and who has debt, whether foreclosure, uh, whether student loan, whether failed business, you are quite eligible and appropriate for you to run to office. As a matter of fact, I think you should run 
because you know what normal New Yorkers are going through. Thank you. Councilman Traeger. Thank you, Public Advocate. I'm very proud today to introduce intro uh, 1085, which would require the Office of the Civil Justice Coordinator to establish programs to provide victims of domestic violence with free full legal representation, which includes the payment of all filing fees in divorce proceedings. Your safety should not be determined by your income. No one should ever have to stay in an abusive marriage just because they can't afford a lawyer. All victims of domestic violence should have free, full legal representation during divorce proceedings. We know the cost of a divorce can be prohibitive, especially if someone has an abusive partner who is controlling the finances or if someone has an uncertain immigration status. It's time for our city to step up and make sure we're doing everything, everything possible to help victims of domestic violence. And I'll also note that I was inspired to act after reading a powerful article in the New York Times. And I want to thank our hardworking, excellent journalists who really do have the power to shape good, effective public policy. Thank you very much. Councilman Yeager. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I'll be brief uh, in uh, recognition of the clock and the empty room. Uh, today I'm introducing uh, introduction 1088. I think this is the sort of common sense legislation that uh, our council has become known for. It's to protect our streets, our neighborhoods from the unruly construction of utilities, of contractors, of uh, just anybody who feels they're going to take a shovel and start uh, hammering away at our streets. This bill will require that anybody working at a job site that digs in the street must have on their person a permit. Not it's at the office, not it's in a trailer down the block, not my guy's going to get it to me, you just stick around. And that they have to produce it for a police officer or any authorized employee of the city of New York upon request, upon demand. Common sense, right? Right now, that's not the way it works. Uh, I have seen this in my own community. I see a job site. I know they don't have the right to close the street. They have the, the cones there unmanned. And I go up, I ask for the foreman. Well, he's not here. Well, who's next in charge? Well, that other guy is. Um, do you have a permit? Yeah, somebody else has the permit. In the meantime, I've already checked. There's no permit to close the street. This will make it a crime to not have that permit on you. You do not have a permit. You're digging in the street. It's not in your pocket. You get handcuffs on you. You get dragged down to the precinct. That's going to make our streets open up again. And it's also going to make utilities pay attention to the law. Right now, they can simply jackhammer away whenever they feel like it. And if they decide that uh, they, you know, maybe perhaps keeping one lane open is too much work, they throw down a couple of cones at the corner, call it a day, and shut down a street. In congested, neighbor in congested neighborhoods, this could literally become the end of traffic, um, or the beginning of traffic, the end of moving around. Um, so this bill will require construction companies, utility companies, contractors, everybody who's going to take a jackhammer to our streets to be a little more respectful of our communities. And I urge you all, thank you very much, colleagues, for remaining, uh, to sign on to Introduction 1088. Mr. Speaker, to close. Thank you all for being here today. Have a nice rest of the summer. This stated meeting is now adjourned.